Grace to you and peace from God, who is and was and is to come. And from Jesus Christ, the faithful witness, the firstborn of the dead and ruler of kings on earth, the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with all the saints. Amen. Welcome to First United Methodist Church this morning as we worship together on this All Saints Sunday. We're so glad that you are worshiping with us online. We hope that you will uh, comment below and let us know that you are here gathered in worship with us today as we prepare for worship on this All Saints Sunday. Um, we just want to tell you about a couple of announcements coming up. One is um, coming up this Friday uh, uh, at 7 o'clock uh, here in the sanctuary. The Voices of Appalachia will present a concert here called Back to the 80s. And um, we are uh, excited about hosting them here um, on Friday for their concert. We hope that you will uh, join us for that if you are able. Um, uh, the other great announcement that I want to share this morning is just a sort of a final update on our cleaning bucket project that we have been working on. Um, we were able to fill a hundred buckets thanks to your generosity um, but even better thanks to the the, the absolute expert shop in a circle nine, we are able to send a good amount of money also with our buckets to the United Methodist Community on Relief to help with disaster relief. The total amount of money that you donated was $8,000 and uh, $8,035. Uh, our uh, circle nine uh, shopping experts were able to come in under $3,000 in terms of the cost of, uh, of the buckets. And so um, that leaves us, uh, and we, we pay we pay a dollar with each bucket, and so um, there's three hundred more dollars for spending. But what that allows us to do is to actually send four thousand eight hundred eighty eight dollars and seventy four cents just straight to UMCOR for them to be able to use uh, for their disaster relief, along with the buckets. And that's all due to your generosity. We're so grateful, so thankful. Last week when we packed the buckets, it was just a, a wonderful success opportunity for us to do that. And again, that's all thanks to your generosity. And so as we worship together, as we give thanks for God's saints, I invite you to join me in prayer. Let us pray. We bless your holy name, O Lord, for all your servants who have finished Having finished their course in faith, now rest from their labors. Give us grace to follow the example of their steadfastness and faithfulness. To your honor and glory, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our gospel reading for this morning comes from Luke chapter 6, verses 20 through 31. Jesus raised his eyes to his disciples and said, Happy are you who are poor, because God's kingdom is yours. Happy are you who hunger now, because you will be satisfied. Happy are you who weep now, because you will laugh. Happy are you when people hate you, reject you, insult you, and condemn your name as evil because of the human one. 
Rejoice when that happens. Leap for joy because you have a great reward in heaven. Their ancestors did the same things to the prophets. But how terrible for you who are rich because you've already received your comfort. How terrible for you who have plenty now because you will be hungry. How terrible for you who laugh now because you will mourn and weep. How terrible for you when all speak well of you. Their ancestors did the same things to the false prophets. But I say to you who are willing to hear, love your enemies. Do good to those who hate you. Bless those who curse you. Pray for those who mistreat you. If someone slaps you on the cheek, offer the other one as well. If someone takes your coat, don't withhold your shirt either. Give to everyone who asks and don't demand your things back from those who take them. Treat people in the same way that you want them to treat you. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O God, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. You may not know this about me, but one of my favorite music artists is Weird Al Yankovic, believe it or not. And in fact, uh, there's been a lot of Weird Al in my life lately. Uh, hopefully there's been a lot in yours, but in my life anyways, a couple weeks ago, Weird Al actually came to Roanoke. He played at the Performing Arts Center, uh, at the Berglund Center, and uh, I went to see him there. It was, it was wonderful uh, and, and, and did it with a, a good friend of mine. And, and then... Um, you may have seen commercials. This past Friday, uh, there was a, a, a biopic of Weird Al that came out called Weird. And, uh, and, and in the same way that many of Weird Al's songs either parody actual songs or styles of songs, the, the movie itself is its own parody of the kind of biopics that, that we see uh, about uh, famous, especially musicians, and sort of the tropes that go along with that. Um, but it got me thinking about parody songs, especially when I was looking at this scripture, because uh, I came across an actual parody of a hymn that was written in the early 1900s, believe it or not, um, that, that sort of speaks to uh, some of what Luke is trying to show us through Jesus's words this morning. Um, you may have heard um, the expression, the pie in the sky. That's uh, right, sort of a way of, of delaying gratification, um, especially in a religious way, right? That, 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 okay, well, things might be bad now, but one day they'll be better. Better, and so you might as well just suck it up now or, or however you want to think about it. But the pie in the sky sort of spiritualizes it and pushes it off, um, off into the distance. Uh, and this is something that's been done um, throughout history uh, in, in some nefarious ways, really, to, to, to keep people in subjugation. And so um, someone wrote a, a, in the early 1900s a, a parody of, uh, it's in the same tune as Sweet By and By, but in, instead it's the pie in the sky. The actual name for it is the preacher and the slave, but the, the, it's often called pie in the sky. And this is how it goes. Um, I also like it because it lampoons long-haired preachers, which, okay. Uh, but this is how it goes. It says, long-haired preachers come out every night to try to tell you what's wrong and what's right. But when asked, how about something to eat? They will answer with voices so sweet. You will eat by and by. In that glorious land above the sky, work and pray, live on hay. You'll get pie in the sky when you die. See, the, the point is that people have real needs in this life and often the way that we turn away from them or at least justify their suffering is by promising a reward later. And, and, and if you read the scripture for this morning in a certain way, you can, you can do that, right? You can say, um, Jesus does say, um, rejoice when that happens. Leap for joy because you have a great reward in heaven. So it's true. You can read it that way. But Luke, the way that he shows this story from Jesus, I think that Luke is deliberately trying to resist that kind of thinking. Um, he's trying to resist a spiritualization where, where it's put off to be the pie in the sky. Because uh, Luke tells this a little bit differently than Matthew. First of all, he puts it much sooner, earlier in his gospel than, Mark, than Matthew does. It comes only a couple of chapters after Jesus has said that he has been anointed to bring good news to the poor. And here Jesus says, blessed or happy are you who are poor. Blessed or happy are you who hunger now. Blessed are you who weep now. Blessed are you when people hate you, reject you, insult you, and condemn your name as evil because of the Son of Man. Matthew, and this is not a knock against Matthew. Matthew's telling it differently. But in Matthew's Beatitudes on the Sermon on the Mount, 
He says, blessed are you who are poor in spirit. Blessed are you who thirst and hunger for righteousness. There is a, a little bit of spiritualization going on there. But Luke, the story he's telling about Jesus is a Jesus who was anointed to bring good news to the actual poor. And not just to promise them something later, but to the promise that Jesus would bring good news now to the poor. So there's something else to what's going on here, because in this reading of it, happy are you who are poor, happy are you who hunger now, happy are you who weep now, happy are you when people hate you. It's not putting it far away into the future. It's saying now, now there is a blessedness. And it's not a blessedness where we justify their suffering and say, well, aren't they fortunate to be poor because uh, that means that they're blessed? Instead, what Jesus is sharing is that God has a special place in God's heart for the poor. God has a special place in God's heart for those who weep and for those who are hated and for those who are hungry, that, that God has a special love for them. And that Jesus was spent, sent to them specially. And, and the, the, if there's any blessedness, it's that because they don't have the comforts of this world, they're more likely, perhaps, to be willing to depend on Jesus Christ. The reason we know this is because Luke puts right up against these blessednesses, woes. Matthew, again, kind of stretches those out. They don't, he doesn't put them right next to each other. But Luke very deliberately says, Woe to you, or how terrible it is for you who are rich. How terrible it is for you who have plenty because you will be hungry. How terrible for you who laugh now because you will mourn and weep. How terrible for you when people speak well of you. Again, Jesus is talking about now. And pulling us away from the tendency to justify the suffering of others as some sort of conduit through which their salvation comes. Instead, Jesus calls us to account. Because for many of us, if we're honest, we experience a relative amount of comfort compared to most of our neighbors, certainly amongst our worldwide neighbors. And so we're not really paying attention to this if we're not squirming when we start hearing the woes, how, how terrible it is that, that, that Jesus is trying to say that there's a, a certain degree of spiritual peril in being comfortable, a certain spiritual peril in being overfed, a spiritual feral, peril in not mourning and weeping with those who mourn and weep. It's, it's why when we talk about even when we've been talking about stewardship here in the church, We've been focused first on the good that being generous does to our spirits and our souls. Because when we hold on, Jesus is making it clear, we hold on to too much. It puts our souls in danger because this is, this is what Luke is giving us is a really a, a, a way of looking at what does it mean to follow faithfully and to not spiritualize, but to do Christ's work on earth now Recognizing that, yes, there is a, a rewardedness, there is an inheritance that, that is given to all of the saints. But to recognize that our work, that, that eternal life begins now and that work begins now. And that we have a responsibility to be part of Jesus Christ's good news to the poor. And whenever we talk about this, one of the things that always changes is people say, how do you do that? Because, and sometimes we kind of kind of hedge or we spiritualize and we say, well, it'll, it'll come one day. When I was in seminary, the, the way that we tried not to let that happen was somebody would usually ask the question after something like that. They would say, what does that look like? What does that look like in our life right now? And I feel like that's what Luke is doing, right? He's saying, this is what this looks like. This is what it looks like. It's to be a follower of Jesus, to grow in love of God and neighbor, to, to be one who's being made holy by Jesus Christ and the power of the Holy Spirit, is to be one who, if we're not poor and not hungry and not grieving, to seek out those who are, 
to be part of the alleviation of their suffering, but also to realize that when we find them and when we are near them, we are finding Jesus because that is where Jesus Christ is. That's what it looks like. Luke is saying, Jesus' words are saying, because we have to be careful. We don't want, we can't excuse the suffering of others as a means to an end. It's why in a pastoral care situation, you're never going to hear me say something like everything happens for a reason, because that's a way of justifying suffering often. But death is, is brutal and, and, and painful. And we recognize as people of resurrection that, 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 that death is not the final word and that we, we dislike death. We, it doesn't make sense in a world where we know that there is eternal life. And so we, we rage against it. We proudly speak of the victory of Christ over death. And by not saying things like that, yes, we recognize that our God can bring good out of anything, but we also, even if we might grow in suffering, we, we don't, by, by spiritualizing it or saying that everything happens for a reason, sometimes we don't honor the suffering of others for what it is, for what folks are really experiencing. Christ who enters into that suffering invites us to join him in that. What does that look like? Sort of curious the way that this is the gospel reading for this All Saints Sunday. Because I would argue that the saints, both living and those who have joined the communion of saints, the great cloud of witnesses, that they show us what this looks like. Because their lives point to Jesus Christ, the love of God and love of neighbor that they grew in in this life, the ways that they lived out these kinds of, uh, the kinds of things that, that, that Luke is talking about, about loving your enemies and blessing those who curse you and, and turning the other cheek and giving, uh, when, you're, when you, someone takes your jacket, you give them your shirt. The, the, the do unto others as they would have, as you would have them do to you. That's what this looks like. And the, the saints are a gift to us because they point us to Jesus Christ. They show us what it's like because their lives look like Jesus' life. And sure, when you look at this, these beatitudes, these woes, these qualities, we recognize that not everybody meets every single one of them perfectly. There's a diversity in the body of Christ and in the communion of saints. People live out their gifts in, in different ways faithfully. But when we say, what does this look like for me? I look and I start to think about the people who we will light candles for shortly. I say, what does this look like? To me, it looks like the faithfulness and constancy of someone like Barbara Howerton, who faithfully came into the space to make sure that the pews were taken care of as a pew angel, who, who, who spent a lot of her own money driving around the valley, buying coats for children from Goodwill and taking them to the clothing closet to donate them. It looks like Frank Chapman serving his community in so many different ways. It looks like Becky Frazier out here singing joyfully to the Lord and extending her praise of God to serving her neighbor. It looks like Buddy Rogers caring for the, this church building, giving of his time and his talents and his sleep to care for this church. That's what it looks like. We honor the saints because they honor Jesus Christ with their life. We celebrate the saints because their lives are signposts that point us to Jesus Christ's life. What does it look like? It looks like the lives of saints because their lives look like Jesus' life. It's why we rejoice. It's why we give thanks for God's saints, even as we grieve them. Because each name on this list that we will read, each of them in their own way points to Jesus Christ and helps us show just a, a, a slice of what this looks like. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Frank Chapman. Scott Kaufman.
Becky Frazier. Hannah Glisson. Lawrence Goodwin. Barbara Howerton. Wally Nelson. Buddy Rogers. Michael Spesser. Charles Weber. Jane Wright. Almighty God, you have knit together your elect in one communion and fellowship in the mystical body of your Son, Christ our Lord. Grant us grace, so to follow your holy saints in all virtuous and godly living, that we may come to those unspeakable joys which you have prepared for those who sincerely love you. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. As we continue in worship, uh, we have this opportunity to share our tithes and gifts. Of course, there's many ways you can give. Uh, you'll see some ways online. Um, you'll see uh, that you can give uh, through our website um, and, and, and uh, as well as mailing. Um, but we're so grateful for your gifts, so thankful. Another just uh, brief reminder is if, as we are still continuing to collect uh, uh, estimate of giving cards from Consecration Sunday, we have over 90 cards now um, that folks have turned in. And if you haven't been able to turn in yours yet, um, we encourage you to. There's lots of ways to do that. Um, if you didn't get a card and you'd like one, please let the church office know. We'll be glad to get you one. But we're so thankful. We hope that we can get as many of those cards in as we can to be able to uh, work towards our budget. But we're so thankful for your generosity and so thankful for the commitments that you're making to our church. But for now, let's uh, receive our tithes and offerings.
want to thank you again for joining us this morning in worship, for, for giving thanks to God for Christ's saints. Uh, and we pray that as this week continues, that we will grow together in love of God and neighbor as Christ continues working in us, helping us to grow in holiness. Hear this final word of blessing. Go forth in the name of the one who was, who is, and who is to come. And go forth with the power of God in Jesus Christ. Amen.